way, but hopefully I can help you turn your sports knowledge into dollar signs to make it a little bit better. Coaching you through tonight's game, it's me, Lauren, the great Gambino. And hey, today isn't all bad. We got an extra day of golf, huh? I mean, Phil Mickelson would have won the Pebble Beach Pro-Am yesterday, but instead we got to see him win it today. So there's that, right? We also got a first look at the AAF. Not the XFL, this is the Alliance of American Football. Yes, if you're like me and your calendar pretty much revolves around the NFL schedule, then you're in luck because we're getting 10 more weeks of football. Yes, it's eight teams and a championship in Vegas and lots of familiar names. So. I wanted to know what you thought about it. We get things started on Twitter before each and every game of HQ Sports. You can find us there at HQ Sports. And yes, I wanted to know what were your thoughts on week one. At Spallow82 says, it's football. And seeing the quarterback get obliterated with no flag was amazing. More on that in a little bit. At UC Kid says, very intrigued. I loved having no kickoff and always going for two after a touchdown. Yes, the rules are pretty cool, and they keep gameplay moving. Teams start at the 25-yard line, and there are no extra points. Very interesting. And at Laird Ron says, the gameplay was good quality. We'll watch again. 10 for 10. Me too. I personally liked seeing players previously drafted by the NFL or excellent college players that kind of just got lost in the shuffle. Even ex-NFL players in coaching roles. And it's this interesting to see what constitutes as a penalty and what doesn't. Like that major hit. Yeah, apparently that was clean. But a lot of you didn't even know what it was or that it started this weekend. Well, the AAF had over 3 million viewers. That was a million more than the NBA did this weekend. So it just goes to show America loves football. I'm not alone. As always, thanks for playing along. And speaking of playing, we have another game on deck. This Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time before the Daytona 500, we are having a special NASCAR-themed game to kick off race day. So I hope to see you there. We are well into season two of HQ, and earning points can definitely help you win games. Earn points for every question that you get correct, every time you share your levels on social media, and every time you win games. Points equals levels. Levels equal free passes. Free passes give you an actual pass on questions and can help you win all the way up to level 10. We also have our big jackpot coming up in just a couple of weeks, so let's see what it looks like right now. Drum roll, please. $77,683. Wow, and that pot continues to grow with the more points that you earn. So keep earning points to win that jackpot. As for tonight, if you can keep ducking my punches for 12 rounds, then you win! Tonight we are playing for $1,000. Yes, think of it as your signing bonus. You're welcome. Extra lives and erasers can definitely help you win. Erasers are earned for free by playing next to at least two people, and you can pick up an extra life right now to help you get back in a round if I really got you up against the ropes. Okay, team, that was our warm-up. I know, easy, right? Now, huddle up to the over 141,000 players. Get those hands in answer tapping position because it's game time. Round number one starts right now. Which member of the Ball family plays for the Lakers? Lonzo, LaVar, or LaMelo? We're talking big baller brand right here for round number one. Well, LeVar might be the most famous, but the position that he plays is dad or dadager. LaMelo plays for an LA team, but it's the LA Ballers of the JBA. Lonzo is the actual NBA player of the fam, who is with the Lakers for at least the rest of the season, that is. Lonzo Ball is who we were looking for here at round number one. 85,920 of you knew that one as we're balling on to round number two. Here it is. Who was the first, ba who was the first baseball player to hit 30, 40, 50, and then 60 home runs? Was it Ted Williams, Roger Maris, or Babe Ruth? Spring training is officially upon us. Pitchers and catchers reported today. It is a beautiful thing. But it's really hard to put Babe Ruth's dominance into perspective. When he set the single season home run record for the first time, he hit 29. The next year, he became the first to hit 30, 
40, and 50 on the way to 54 that year. And seven years later, he hit 60. Babe Ruth, the great Bambino, is who we were talking about. 73,254 of you know that OG as I take you to round three. Here it is. Heisman winner Kyler Murray just announced he is committing fully to what organization? MLB, NFL, or NBA? Ah, yes, another brilliant two-sport athlete. And he just turned down one of these leagues, forfeiting $4.2 million guaranteed. Well, he would be on the short side for an NBA player, and although he is on the short side for the NFL too, that's where he's going, officially turning down the A's and Major League Baseball. NFL is the answer we were looking for here. He is committed. 88,039 of you are committed to this game. Let's find out, round four. According to the most recent Forbes estimate, what is the most valuable franchise in the NBA? Lakers, Knicks, or Warriors? Clearly, this is about everything beyond the court. Because if it was just about basketball, it would be the opposite. At an estimated four billion, it's the New York Knicks, right? The New York Knicks, some good news for your fans. 40,887 of you got that one right. Wow, losing over 60,000 players here at round number four. Well, listen, Knicks fans, they might not be winning any games these days, but you could. Round five coming at you. Who holds the official NFL record for most sacks in a single game? Derek Thomas, JJ Watt, or Michael Strahan? It's the NFL offseason, I know. Sad that it's over, but we could still have fun talking about it here, right? Strahan has the record for sacks in a season, of course, but no one has ever harassed a quarterback in a single game more than Derek Thomas, who had seven sacks against the Seahawks in 1990 and is also tied for second with a six-sack game against the Raiders in 98. Derek Thomas is your answer here at round number five. 34,276 of you know how to move out of the pocket, knocking out so many more there, and we're only at our halfway point. Here we are, round number six. Who is the last NBA head coach not named Kerr or Lou to lead a team to the finals? David Blatt, Greg Popovich, or Scott Brooks? Lou took the Cavs to three of the last four finals, but the one before that, that was David Blatt, who took his team to the championship series, then got fired the next year while his team was in first place. Tough gig. David Blatt is the answer here at round six. 19,152 of you sticking in there. Wow, losing over 60,000 again here, only at our halfway point. We got a half left. Can you hang in with me till the finish? Round number seven. Frank Robinson broke the MLB manager color barrier when he took over what team? Cleveland Indians, Baltimore Orioles, or Montreal Expos? And baseball lost a legend last week. Frank Robinson won an MVP with the Orioles and managed them later, but his first role as skipper came while he was also still a player with the Cleveland Indians in 1975. Cleveland Indians is your answer here at round seven. 10,782 of you are hanging in there. Hey, next up, here's your hint. Hockey, round eight, here it comes. What U.S.-based team has the greatest number of Stanley Cups? Detroit Red Wings, Chicago Blackhawks, or Boston Bruins? Does that hint help you any? Let's see. Well, Canada definitely takes it in hockey, no question. The Canadians have a total of 24 Cups won, and the Maple Leafs are second with 13. The top U.S. team resides in the Motor City. The Red Wings are the only U.S. team to go to crack double digits with 11 of them. Oh, yes. Detroit Red Wings is the answer here at round number eight. 7,488 of you got that one right. We got four more to go and the numbers are dwindling. That means a bigger pot. I like it. Round number nine. What driver said he wouldn't race Danica Patrick because her small size gave her an advantage? Was it Kurt Busch, Robbie Gordon, or Tony Stewart? This one literally makes me laugh out loud. 
Big man Robbie Gordon was worried he was too big of a man that the weight difference between himself and Danica would give her an unfair advantage. Right. IndyCar and NASCAR both have minimum weight requirements for the car, including the driver. Robbie Gordon, oh yes, thought it was an unfair advantage. 2,788 of you heard him say that. Who's got the advantage now? As we move into the final quarter, you got three questions left. Can you hang on till the finish? Round 10. The Aug Mug is the name of the trophy given to the winner of what event? World Cup, British Open, America's Cup. Oh yes, this is thought to be the oldest trophy still being used in international sport. The Ald Mug is given to the winner of the America's Cup. There she is, 33 pounds of sterling silver. The world's premier yacht race is the America's Cup. 2,270 of you knew that one, and I think you've thought it's been smooth sailing up until this point, but we got two more to go, and they're tough ones, round 11. Sports Illustrated's first ever Sportsman of the Year accomplished what feat? Triple crown, sub four minute mile, 10 Olympic medals. Roger Bannister passed away last year at 88 years old, but before that, he accomplished a feat many once thought impossible, breaking the four minute barrier in the mile. He was SI's first sportsman of the year back in 1954 and later went on to become a leading neurologist. Sub four minute mile, 1,374 of you used your heads on that one. Ha, as you know what this means, we go on to our final round. Oh yes, it all comes down to this. You had one hell of a career. Your name is on that ballot. Ten, you get voted in. That's the question. And here's mine. The 22nd and 24th U.S. president shares two of his names with a Hall of Fame player at what position? Center fielder, pitcher, shortstop. It all comes down to this. Game is on the line. Rover Cleveland is still America's only two non-consecutive term president. Grover Cleveland Alexander also had two non-consecutive terms of marriage. Yeah, he got married, divorced, and then remarried that same wife, but I digress. He also won 373 games with the Cardinals, Cubs, and Phillies and cemented his status in 1938 as a Hall of Fame pitcher. Pitcher is the answer we were looking for here at the end. 977 of you just became our new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations. Nine hundred and seventy-seven elite championship quality players right here. Oh yes, we are taking home a prize of one dollar and two cents. But you know what I always say, it's a dollar and two cents more than you started this game with 15 minutes ago. So you're welcome to make a dollar every 15 minutes. That's amazing. Matt O'Hay, $32 is coming your way. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I liked it. Joe the Firefighter, wow, look at